God said to Moses, I am who I am. Say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. My name is David Phibbs, and my wife's name is Judy. We live near Boston Bar, about 20 kilometers north, in a little place called Kiefer's. My name is Gordon Foster. Um, I live in Fort Vermilion, Alberta. My name is Edward Wapadu. Um, originally from uh, Wabasca, Alberta. I'm Rosemary Stalker, and I live in Blumenort area outside of Fort Vermilion. And I'm the community coordinator here at the Fort Vermilion radio station along the beautiful Peace River. Uh, my name is Al Bailey. Uh, I'm uh, currently residing in Fort St. John, British Columbia, sharing the gospel, partnering with First Nations people. My name is Marilyn Bailey, and I am Al's wife. We have been so blessed to work on the radio station. I'm Donna Tiedemann. I'm Don Tiedemann. We live at Fort Nelson, BC, but we do work for uh, the CIM radio station at Slave Lake. We do all the coordinating there. Hey, I'm uh, Walter Pope. Uh, we are in Fort Liard, Northwest Territories. Uh, I've been with CIM since 2010, involved in the technical side of CIM uh, broadcasting, whether it be transmitter maintenance, computer programming, daily maintenance and downloads, basically what I'm up to. And I'm Aileen Pope, and I'm wife and mother, and do whatever needs to be done. So that we can serve you the best we can. Terry producing programming in the relationship with, with that and with Alan Marilyn serving so faithfully up in Fort St. John and Dawson with that area. Faithful examples of you. And then Don and Donna, you know, the little hat. You're just the one who, who makes us rock a little bit. And I love that. But yeah, do that for Jesus with all that you do with this great passion. And I'm glad to see even sensing very clear a unity that is an example for all us couples. Let's step out together. This is not just for one, but it's for all. My name is Michael Sandstrom, and we are serving with CIM Media and Radio Broadcasting in Edmonton in several areas, but specifically in a servant leadership role with all of our missionaries for all of our local FM radio stations, with small and big teams in small and big communities, and also within the Choice Digital community, which we are in development right now. And of course, with our ethnic and multilingual communities where we have a lot of different languages, including Chinese and Tamil and many more languages to come. All of that falls under the umbrella of CIM Media and just enjoying to work together with very talented people and the capacity they have as a body to serve together for the glory of God. My involvement with CIM Radio started in 2003, right from the beginnings of CIM Radio. That was in Fort Vermilion. And at that time, CIM started in a mobile home. My wife and I, we were planning to be in missionary service, and we thought it would be in mission aviation somewhere else in the world, but the Lord called us to be involved with the radio ministry. From the very early days, it started off with just bringing in music, taking in CDs at that time, and adding to the music library, and connecting with program content providers like Focus on the Family and, and In Touch Ministries, and Insight for Living and making sure that those programs into the broadcast system and uh, connecting the computers and, and the live on-air broadcasting, some live hosting as well, hosted the, the noon call-in show where I was taking uh, song requests and, and doing some live DJ and weather reports as well. And so uh, my involvement with CIM Radio has been quite varied now. I am uh, doing more of the behind the scenes work of sometimes making those technical visits to the locations, making sure the equipment is running, transmitter upkeep as well as network and computer upkeep and repair sometimes if that's necessary. In the future, look forward to getting more radio stations online and I look forward to, to doing that in, in more communities where CIM is broadcasting all across Canada. So God is going to do something big and fantastic here. Um, I believe that with all my heart. I'm waiting for that to happen. I am sure this visit here and what you did last night and the radio station here is going to be part of that. But along that way, there are also going to be ordinary days. There are going to be people who are prayed for 
and we then have to console people when it doesn't work out the way we think it will. There will be days of just trudge and that doesn't mean we've got it wrong because there are going to be glorious days too, both here on earth and then when we are all healed in heaven. Thank you. The CIM radio story is pretty amazing. It's for the glory of God. In 1999, it started with a vision my wife and I saw when it came to reaching out to the nearby communities where we were located in Northern Alberta and Fort Vermilion. We recognized the the purpose of us as living for Christ in this community was to share our faith and sharing Christ with many as we could. And the long distances that encompasses really required us to travel a lot. And we could not visit with people every day in such an extent because of distance. So things came up and we started to think about how can we best do that. And broadcasting was something that we talked about and said, how can we do that? Is, is it possible? We had heard that Christian broadcasting in Canada will not be allowed. We gathered a few people around this vision. We started to pray and we saw God open up doors in miraculous ways. Not only did he bring a team together of a core people of people up north in Fort Vermilion and La Crete and also the indigenous reserves uh, to broadcast to the community, to all the community in a format that was non-commercial and done in such a way that it was totally depending on the Lord. And it, doors were open in 2003. It took almost four years to get this established and approved by CITC, which was a miracle in itself. 28th of January 2003, the first broadcast was approved for Fort Vermilion. In a little trailer, we sat up uh, the broadcast studios and we ended up doing uh, uh, a celebration and towers were set up, antennas went up and the first broadcast started originally on 92.3 FM. We had immediately to change to a new frequency because of interference to 92.7. And since then, we have been broadcasting in Fort Vermilion, Alberta. And this has spread out because we wanted to help other communities in the nearby vicinities of Fort Vermilion. And we ended up creating a number of repeated broadcasts. If you're looking at today specifically, we have broadcasting in 30 locations, not only in Alberta, but in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and lately just in the last few years, opened up in smaller communities such as Fort Liard in Northwest Territories. It's an amazing journey. This cannot be accomplished without a body of believers coming together. For each of those locations, there are individuals that have the same mind, a heart for sharing their faith, and they come together utilizing broadcasting as a tool, radio specifically, to reach out. And of course, radio today is more than just radio. It's also on your phones. You can listen to it online. And CIM Radio provides both apps and it provides um, online opportunities to listen to these broadcasts. 24 seven, seven days a week, we say that, we say 365. That's when the good news are going out in these communities. It's been a fantastic journey. Had not been accomplished if it wouldn't be for the Lord planting a seed in the heart of a few people. And today we are many together as missionaries that serve and live for Christ. Ultimately, we hope that that will continue to grow as the needs are and we want to share the goodness and the gifts what God has given to us through broadcasting specifically. It was, it was kind of interesting to have Christian radio and uh, to be a part of that. As more stations came online, they needed towers. And I worked for the, uh, at the time they were called the Government of Alberta Sustainable Resources Development. And uh, we would climb fire towers, right, for the lookout towers. So I had tower climbing experience. I volunteered uh, to climb any towers that were required in the area here to set up the antennas. Well, myself and another gentleman, we'd climb the towers and uh, install the antennas and all the wiring down. We'd zip lock that as we came up and down the, the radio. So we did, uh, oh, little towers out here that meandered to uh, larger towers on top of Watt Mountain outside of high level. Uh, we've gone down to Wabascod and the tower there, Peace River, Fairview.
I mean, many of you may wonder why radio uh, and radio broadcasting, what effect it actually has on people's lives. Because all that we do within CIM has to do with impacting people's life ultimately. Impacting in what way? Impacting in such a way that people's lives become transformed, changed. Heart are transformed for Christ. That's our ultimate goal. The rest of it is, in a sense, secondary. The technology is important to accomplish that. It is presence through radio, which is a traditional means of broadcasting over FM. And we do that too in so many locations at this point, at 30 locations across Canada. So there are stories, of course, how people's lives have been impacted. We hear them often, people call in, people share with us how broadcasting and radio broadcasting specifically changes your life. It could be that you're driving on the road and you're listening to a song, for example, that speaks right to your heart. And many times we hear listeners saying that was just the right song at the right time in my vehicle when I'm on my way. It was an emergency circumstance. It could be in a time going to, to seek the Lord. And you hear that perfect song just that is tailored for, for you as a listener. So radio is present all the time. And there are other aspects of radio too. Radio is for free. Radio doesn't cost anything, at least for the listener. And the listener can listen all the time through various means to traditional radio transmitters or receivers, or they can listen through um, car and vehicles. Um, and we see that happen very often because people's lives are often where you are. And if you spend time in small communities where often they don't have any broadcasting whatsoever, and often in those communities where we are, that's the case, we provide the good news over the radio waves and the radio waves impacting people's lives deeply. We have seen that in circumstances in just those communities where there's nothing else and they tune into this broadcast and they become the only broadcast that impact. Of course, a locality of something, radio is local. Radio is just there with the people that live in that community. They can hear local news. They can hear voice from the local community. It's not just a repeat from somewhere, but it's actually content from your unique community. It could be broadcasting liners. There could be content generated. It could be weather reports that are localized. Even emergency messages, not to mention just that in itself, are so important for people to be informed. Many people are scared to darken the door of a church. The whole conversation of faith is missing in their lives in general. And I believe radio is a way to bridge that gap. I think more with men than with anybody else. In general, men are too proud to be seen in a church in a spiritual conversation, but they can hide in their truck and listen anonymously. The other thing I really believe is that the Lord has unique appointments with every individual. It might be radio today, it might be you or somebody else sharing Jesus Christ with them tomorrow. Every appointment is unique. Because we lived in a different community than the station, it's mostly email contact and we had a person listening in Old Saskatchewan that uh, really enjoyed our morning show and wished it was longer and, and then enjoyed the classic gospel of the rock program on Saturdays and emailed and wanted that to be longer too. But, but they said things like they appreciated her poem and that kind of thing, and that they couldn't wait to uh, listen to it in the morning when it was on. So that was very encouraging. It was touching somebody's life in another province. That was kind of good for us. When we lived in Vanderhoof, there was a lady that lived, uh, worked in the bakery below the station. And uh, when we started to do the poem, she gave me a whole bunch of books on poem so I got all her books and recorded them and she was excited that that she was being able to be a part of that. This affects people's faith because now they have a word of encouragement which they may not get because they don't attend a church, they don't attend uh, a group uh, study or something but they have the opportunity then to hear uh, messages on the radio uh, they hear music that uh, brings forth the truth of the gospel and it, it, it impacts their faith because many have come to, to know uh, Jesus Christ as Savior because they have been listening to CIM radio. And when you hear those testimonies, it is real joy to, to know that the good news has been going forth through the radio or, or by radio waves and people are listening to it. No, I appreciate the team would come together 
radio broadcast is, is compromised or it's out or the signal's lost, we got to go up to the tower. So we organize that and get up there and do what we could and flip the switch and we're back on the air. And because uh, people, you know, after starting to listen to the radio, it's just part of their day. And then when you turn the radio on, there's no signal. It's like, uh, what's going on? The phone calls have started happening and what's going on? So uh, you try and lessen that time that you're down, getting that antenna where it should be in place and just correctly positioned such that we've got full power and we're able to flip the switch and get, get the good news out again. Because that's what CIM is really all about, getting the good news of the gospel out there. What a blessing and a privilege it is to turn on a radio and hear good news. Uh, the gospel and messages from, from different pastors and the music and it's just, it just something that people look forward to and after hearing it, uh, they want to continue to hear it. Oh man, I took a back big square, new thing. And I was coming, that was your number now, but that, let the ex right now, that can be more kissed off. Cost some more, to us some slow, to have any more. I'm grateful that we had this chance today. I want to encourage you to move forward and advance things. Reach out to the, your family and friends, your cousins, relatives, uncles, aunties, brothers, sisters, whatever you could do. That we can uh, help each other move things forward and advance things in this hour. So with that, I want to say thank you. It is the good news of, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life that we're broadcasting. And uh, there was just a song on, I will not be silent. And that's the message that we bring out with this ministry here, that um, Jesus is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, there's no other way and salvation, eternal life with Jesus Christ is what this ministry is all about. It's not whether I'm doing a good job or bad job, I don't know, but I'm here. I'm making myself available for him. That's what God wants, to make you available to him. Unbelievable what God can do through you. And I just pray that he works a work through me. It's nothing me, it's all Christ that that really will change a life and that is our story. Well, the reason why we do what we do here on CIM is precisely this. We want people to be able to hear the good news. We want them to be able to listen, take it in, that it'll take root in their hearts, that they will be able to experience this amazing relationship with Jesus Christ and that he will be able to impact their lives the way we have been impacted. That's why we do what we do with CIM and CIM Media and Radio and The Choice and Multilingual Broadcast is to get the good news out there so that your life can be changed the way our lives have been changed. To the glory of God, in His name.